Blackboard Collaborate Advanced Setup Tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to get into more of the nitty gritty of uh, Blackboard Collaborate, really how to set it up. Again, not how to use it yet, but how to set it up. So, in, in this tutorial, I've gone inside of my course, in this case it's uh, the development shell, but you'd want to be in your course, and we need to decide where we're going to be deploying um, these Collaborate sessions. They could be in learning modules, they could be inside of uh, its own area, and that's what I'm going to do for this demonstration, but understand that it certainly could be in any area that is a content area inside of your course. So we could be deploying these inside of learning modules, so let's say you wanted to have a weekly video chat or something like that, and you had each of your learning modules, you could go inside of each one of these and, and add um, a link inside of each module. But in this case, I'm just going to add kind of a home base for Collaborate on our course menu. So I'm going to come up here to add a menu item and I'm going to go down to a content area. In this case I'm going to call it video discussions. Um, I could call it uh, collaborate. That might get a little confusing for students but whatever makes sense to you in your course. And I'm going to go ahead and make this available to users as well. So here's video discussions. Let me move this up a little bit just to make it easier for us in this tutorial but really this should be wherever you would want it to be or again you could be using uh, learning modules or something like that. So I'm going to go inside of Video Discussions and I'm going to go up to Tools and then down to Blackboard Collaborate. And there are other ways to get to this as well. You can get to this um, from your Tools area, from your Course Tools. You can open this up and come down and get to Blackboard Collaborate from, from this way as well, I do believe. Um, but I think the, the easiest way for now is just to have our content area and go to Tools. So what we're going to do is inside of here there are several different avenues that we can take. If you've seen the basic setup video we just said uh, hey let's add a link to the to the overall room and put it somewhere inside of the course and we move forward from there. And this one in the advanced tutorial we're going to be looking at how do we actually set up sessions. So um, let's take a look very briefly at the default room and, and, and see that it has a whole bunch of, of settings allowed inside of here. So if I give a click on edit room I'm going to see that there's a variety of different settings inside of here but there's not really any date um, or time criteria. Um, there's just you know can I do teleconferencing, you know what are the room attributes um, and I'll cover all these here in just a moment um, and then you know what are the the roles when people pop in. But what we're going to do is we're going to begin setting up sessions for um, for your students to participate in. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over to create a session and right here you can give this whatever name you want. So I'm going to call this uh, I don't know, example video discussion one and uh, so this is going to be the session name. Now this could be Wednesday office hours or this could be um, uh, group debates, you know, whatever you would want to call this session. And what you'll notice is it has a start time and an end time. And so what you can do is you can come in here and you can set this so that you could say um, on Wednesday from 10 o'clock to, to noon I'm going to be available, something like that. And you can actually set it to repeat. So if this was going to be, I don't know, like let's say our uh, virtual office hours. And um, virtual office hours are going to be every Wednesday, well no, let's make it let's make it today. Every Tuesday. So I've got Tuesday and then they're all gonna start from um, I don't know ten o'clock and they're going to run until uh, eleven o'clock. So this is gonna be my virtual office hours. So I've set up my session name and I've given a start time and I'm gonna go ahead and repeat this. So this is gonna be weekly. Uh, so every every Wednesday, and really you want this every week, and I want 15 occurrences. But if you wanted it to be every two weeks, you could say you know every other week, um, and it's going to have 15 occurrences, whatever you want. So right here, I'm going to say this is going to be weekly with 15 occurrences, um, and uh, then it then it ends. Or you can set an actual you know uh, end time if you want. So like maybe the end of the semester, you could select that. Um, in this case, I'm just going to leave it as is, and uh, you can allow folks to pop into the session early. Which, so since I've said it's at 10 o'clock, they could come in at uh, what 9:45. But we can set this to not early at all, or you can allow them um, up to an hour early. Uh, in this case, 15 minutes is fine if somebody wants to pop in there a little bit early. Next, I'm going to come down to session types. So all users registered in this course can attend this session, or 
all users registered in your course that you teach can attend this session. So what this means is only this course or this one is going to be um, multiple different sections. So let's say I'm teaching um, three different sections this semester and I want to have open office hours for, for all of my students in this case um, for each of the different courses that I'm teaching. I'd make this a shared session and I would select the, you know the different courses that I wanted to have access to this. So in this case, you know, shared, anyone who is in any of my courses can pop in and take a look. I'll just go through and select all my courses. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to say this course specifically. So next, let's come down to teleconference options. I highly recommend that you switch this over to use the built-in option. If you don't want teleconference, it means people cannot call into it. Um, and if you want to use third party, that's a different setup. So I highly recommend using the built-in, and I'll show you how to get access to those numbers once, uh, once we deploy this somewhere. Next, let's go ahead and look at room attributes. So right here, um, is this going to be what kind of record mode? Because you can record these sessions. We're going to do this as a, as a manual, but you could set it to automatically record when, uh, when the folks pop in, it begins recording, or you could disable the recording uh, outright. So how many talkers can you have at one time? You can have from one to six talkers. Um, three is pretty good. Six can become uh, uh, kind of problematic unless you're looking to do rounds of row, row, row your boat. You probably don't want that many people speaking at a time. Three is a pretty good default. Max number of cameras. Um, you can set this from one to six. It depends on the amount of bandwidth you have. I think three is a decent default, but you certainly can increase it if you'd like or decrease it if you're finding that you're having problems. Next, so should you be able to view um, private messages. So what this means is you can turn private messaging on and folks can chat back and forth, but if you turn this to on, that means you can actually see as the moderator all of the private chats going on. So you know that's that's depending on the purpose of your discussions as to when you're in there uh, and, and you certainly may want to disclose that if you turn that on. So next, uh, looking at all permissions. So if you turn this on, that means um, that all of the participants are going to have um, full access to the session resources. So they can do the whiteboard. They can um, they can enable and disable audio and things like that. So it gives them basically presenter rights if you turn this on. Uh, you want to be careful with this because that means that they can do recordings and things like that as well. But if you have a good use for it, for giving everyone permission, this is where we do that. We just toggle that over to on. Next, we can turn on the hand raise mode, which means that when a, a new student enters inside of the room, uh, you get a little indicator, their hand goes up, and uh, you, can, you can see that they're in there. Um, next is allow in-session invitations, which means that uh, moderators can invite other people to join that may or may not be a, uh, a member of the class. If you're going to be the only moderator, it's not a big deal. You, you're going to you know, potentially want to enable this, like if you wanted a guest speaker to come in, you can certainly do that. Next, let's look at hide names in recordings. So if you're going to be making an archive of this and you don't necessarily want um, those specific student names or participant names associated with it, you can go ahead and enable this. And what happens is in the live version, everyone can see each other's names and, and, and whatnot. But in the archived version, in the recorded version, um, everyone will show up as anonymous. So that's um, a, a pretty, pretty good way of if you're planning on reusing this in other classes. Uh, down the road, uh, you may want to go ahead and turn on um, that you're going to hide names in the recording, and so that way, you know, you're not vi violating FERPA or anything like that. But you could reuse this content if you want to. Um, so you just enable that by turning it on or off. Next, you can actually preload content into your session for you to be able to use, and there's a variety of different files, MP4s, MP MP3s, um, and to do that, you would just, you know, click browse, and you can tr you can upload your content from there. Um, coming down, let's go ahead and look at Grade Center integration. If you want to integrate this with your Grade Center, like um, maybe you want to give students participation points for popping in here. In this case, I don't know, I'll give them 10 points. Um, and if they actually show up inside of there, and you can view the list of attendees um, in, inside of the Grade Center, and you can actually give points for participating in the, the Collaborate. Uh, sessions. So next, let's go, da go down and we're going to look at uh, assigning the roles. So when everyone comes into this currently, by default, everyone will come in as a participant except for uh, the instructor, which will come in as a moderator. 
Um, if you want everyone to come in as a uh, moderator, you can select the second option. Everyone comes in has full uh, full rights to it, but you, you do need to be very careful with that. I think it's a little bit better to start with everyone as a participant, and if you need to give them permissions, you can later on. Um, next, you can actually assign access um, to different people, so you can add people as moder moderators or add people as participants and manually um, control you know who's who's going to be a moderator inside of your course so if uh, maybe I wanted the demo user to be a moderator inside of here you can see that I've added that over there and there they are Let me go ahead and remove that um, so you can you can customize that as well but I'm gonna go ahead and leave it as default of uh, everyone joins as a participant when I'm all done I'm gonna go ahead and say save okay so now that we've submitted uh, we're going to take a look in here and we can see that here is this virtual office hours right so we've created this this session so what we're going to do is we're going to look right here what I want to do is click on the um, action link item and now we need to make this uh, available to the user so what we're going to do is we're going to go to add link so again that action link item and we're going to say add link because we've created the sessions but it's not the students can't get to it anywhere in this case this is where we could come into we could expand content we could go into our demo module you know wh whatever learning module we want uh, for this demonstration I've added something uh, the video discussions area so I'm gonna go ahead and add this right in here and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and say save now we can add some details if we want to the link itself um, and we can we can do date restrictions on it if we want but since we already have the availability and everything set inside of here we really don't need to do that but I'm gonna go ahead and say save and we'll see how this appears. So when now when we go to the video discussions area, here it is. We can see there's virtual office hours, and we can click in there. And um, once we click, it's it's going to say, okay, here's where we can launch the room. And he, remember, I talked before about the telephone options. So for students, when they pop in here, they're going to see a participant phone number and a participant PIN. If they call this phone number, they can actually dial in via, with a phone. Uh, of course, they won't be able to see what goes on inside the room, but they will be able to access it just like a conference call. It's not a toll-free number. They will have to pay long distance if, if um, that's not a part of their plan, but they can call into it, and uh, they will have a unique PIN. Uh, for each of them so that's how they would get in and you can do the same thing you can actually as a moderator you can pop in there and, and, and use that same phone number and then you have your own pin and you can use this as a, a, a conferencing call and when you launch the room that's when it all pops up and uh, then from there on out you'll be using the collaborate but that's the basics of how to set up a, a session inside of here if if you wanted to um, add another session let's go ahead and return to that content area Let's go ahead and go up to Tools. We'll return to Blackboard Collaborate. And from here, we could create a new session. Maybe you wanted to have an ongoing session, something that's just always open. Um, you could add a basic link, or you could come in here and you could have a session that's open for an entire week. So this could be week discussions. And you could allow folks to come in here and, and um, work at any point. So it could start on the... 19th but not end until the 25th so you really have a, a long range if you wanted to leave it open for a year you know you could you could you know advance far in advance and, and make this constantly open um, so you have a lot of different options inside of here if you went down you can you can set these up and I'll go ahead and save and I'll have a whole another session inside of there but again so I've created this other session but I haven't linked to it so if we return to video discussions you'll see there's nothing here I have to add that link somewhere so we're gonna come back up here we're gonna to return to collaborate we're gonna come down in this weekly discussions I'm gonna click on that action link item and we're going to go to add uh, add a link Let me see if I can get that add a link and here it is video discussions and save and here it goes so now if I return to video discussions I'll see that the link is truly there and that's how we can get into it um, so those are the basic elements of actually setting up video discussions. Uh, I certainly hope this helps. Have fun.